I'm back. We are here with part two. Um, if you missed it, part one is putting our covers together. And part two, we're moving on and we're going to put the holes in the book to create our book with lots of tips and tricks on how to do that. And I really hope that you get to make some books of your own because they're just way too much fun and there's way too many things you can do with them. So enjoy. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the bind book binding and I'm going to teach you a trick. Here are my some finished books I have and you'll see that the rings are different sizes. So this is the smallest ring, this is a medium sized ring. And you'll notice that I have a piece of washi tape on the edge of my bi book binding die. The reason is it's for placement. Now these pages were both cut with the same spaced washi tape and what basically what it is is you put a piece of washi tape on the side of your die and it acts as a guideline and then that way I always know that if I butt my paper up to that washi tape line that my book is going to cut at the same spot every single time and you can see on this the rings are smaller this is the smallest ring and so the, tr the trouble is or the trick is you want to be able to open your book so you can see that you need to put the paper so that there's a bit of a space in between. And that's why you want the washi tape guideline. And now if you look at my other book, I used a medium sized ring, but I didn't change my placement. And you, can you see how much more space I have? So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The papers all seem to be staying in really well with this even though it's cut for cut further away if that makes sense but I could have moved my washi tape maybe and cut them a little bit closer the good news is I'm gonna be able to put a lot of papers in this book but I think next time I did it I would move my washi tape just to skosh over as the rings are bigger um, it probably makes for easier turning as what well, because they kind of get stuck so that's what I would imagine. But this is all experimentation, so let me know if you've figured out anything to do as far as that goes. So I have my finished book here because I had done video that didn't quite turn out, so I'm gonna have to redo this portion of the video. But this is my finished book. You can see this is the fabric that I showed you that I cut. And how fun is that, creativation? This'll, this is what's on my blog. If you go to my blog, karenbeers.blogspot.com, there'll be a lot more uh, step outs and, and things and direct directions on how to make this book. But basically this book is going to be for, my photos from Creativation. We meet people, it says go with your heart. It's just gonna be a book about the people that we meet. And this is Susie Bentz and I, my bestie and crafting companion or friend at the airport. This is another one of Eileen's dies um, that just makes this cute, cute pocket and tag, which I love. And this whole book is going to be filled with the people and the friends that I meet at Creativation. I took a mixed media revolution class with Seth Apter, so that's the next, was sort of day one. So I'm going to go through and just, it's just a fun way to add friends and put pictures and names with photos. For the inside paper, I did cut the paper a little bit smaller than my book. Originally, I decided I would cut the pages using the book binding die or the um, passport die. But what happens is they're exactly the same as the cover, which is fine. But because we're using sort of a freehand system, what I realize is if I punch the holes even just a little bit, then this is what happens to my book. So my hot tip is to cut your page is down just a little bit. So I ended up cutting these, um, and you can see here I have a measurement tab so I know what to do, four three quarter tall by three and a quarter wide. The book itself is five inches tall, three and a half wide, so I just cut that, use the measurements by a quarter of an inch, cut it down, hand cut the books, and then I took my handy dandy corner puncher, or corner rounder, and I punch the, using the quarter inch um, side, I rounded the corners. So that was just a quick and easy way. And then the cool thing is I can also put in, this is from uh, Paper House. The, they have sheets with the cards on them. 
that's another paper house die. That's from their discovery line. So that's a great way to add my extra little journal cards or my fun, my fun cards. So hot tip, hot tip. But I am going to run through and show you how we make this work. And the only difference is I'll be doing it with paper, but it's the same with fabric. So here's another fabric book I made. And the difference is I wanted to show you, I did fabric on the outside, the foam adhesive in the middle, and then I lined the inside with paper. So the difference in these two covers is this one is much more floppy squishy, which I still kind of like. I mean, I added some elements to it. It's still working. It has a totally different feel though than this one. This one has the fabric feel on the outside, but because the paper's on the inside, it's a little bit stiffer, which that's cool too. It just depends what you want to do. And uh, how pretty is that one going to be? So now I'm going to show you how I did these binding holes. Okay, I'm back. I have my Sizzix Big Shot. You can also do this with uh, the Vagabond or whatever large Sizzix machine you have. You can go to their website to check out which ones are compatible um, with this plate. Again, if you have the mover and shaper tray, old fashioned style, you can use that. That works perfectly well. I am using the shuttle, which is very cool. I really like it. I have my washi tape at the length that I want and I have two magnets. So what I did was I went, I got these at uh, Michael's. They're just heavy duty magnets. And so they hold really well. They're about that thick. That gives you a hint. And they have them at all, you can buy magnets anywhere. But one of the things I do want to caution you, you have to be very careful. Underneath this is metal. So I want to make sure that I don't get the magnets anywhere near this part because it will suck up the magnets. And as I said, Sizzix, this is not an approved Sizzix method. I don't know what they would think of it, but I like it. I think we're smart enough that we can prevent that from happening. And it did happen to me with my Vagabond and I did manage to get them out, but that's not recommended. So all you have to do to prevent that is make sure you use your cutting pad on top, which we need to do anyway. I have my mover and shaper. I'm just going to line up my paper on my line and make sure that it's sort of halfway. And again, I've cut my paper a little bit. So that gives me a little bit of leeway that if my positioning's a little bit off, I'm going to place my magnets to hold. See how simple that is. And then I can come back and make sure that I'm really and truly lined up sort of fiddle it. Yep, that looks good. And then with the shuttle, you only need one plate. So I, I encourage you that all of the plates have the directions right on them. And just do a quick double check before you run stuff through your machine. I can't tell you how many times I didn't do that. I put too much of a sandwich and then it gets jammed and it's a heck of a job getting it unjammed through the machine. All you have to do is go, oh, Let's see what do the directions say. And the directions say base plate, material, mover and shaper, shuttle. So that's all I need. I don't need that second plate that I would normally use. Okay, so putting this down, I'm gonna put my top plate. And again, the plate is what's gonna prevent the magnets from getting sucked, sucked up. So let's make sure we use those. And then I'm going to let my Catch that. See how easy it is. Just pop it in. And now I will. And I like to do this away from my machine, move the magnets. But look at how easy that is. And there's my three pieces of paper. Or my cover is punched. And I can just pop these in. Super simple. Love this system. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you will join me again soon. If you want to follow me, it's karenbeers.blogspot.com and I have links to all my social media there. I post almost daily or bi-daily on Instagram and there's a lot more projects to come. Have a great day.